Do you ever go back and rewrite stuff? Do you ever go back and look at like, some of your early plays and go, you know what, I know how to solve that now? That's, that's a very interesting question because, you know, for, for example, when Mutants was done, um, we, we changed the script so much in rehearsal mm -hmm. uh, that it, it literally was a different play than the one we had started with. And, and then when people saw it and people reacted to it, everyone was sort of, oh, the, the swearing, I couldn't take the swearing, I couldn't take the swearing. And so I wanted to get another production of it, so I, I took the swearing out of it so we could send it off to people and see if they would do it. And it actually made it a lesser play. And, and someone published it about five years ago, and they sent it back to me and said, you know, do you want to go through this and look at it? And I went through it, and I went, this is not the play we did. Mm -hmm. This was, it was one of those later scripts that they, they had, and I had to go and search around and talk to actors who were in the part and stuff to see if anybody had a script. And I ended up finding one. And I did have to go back and sort of fix it up here and there, but for the most part I find that's kind of a pointless exercise. For me, it's a much better idea to write a new play where I utilize those things that worked in the past rather than go and try to make whatever the impulse was to write that play, to try to find that again, even two or three years after it had happened. You know, a play is, is about the here and now. Theater is about the here and now. And so for me, especially because I'm very much placed in the here and now, in the present tense, that's my whole thing when I'm writing, when I'm directing, is how do we stay in the present tense in the theater all the time mm -hmm. and not slip into the past tense. That um, going back to plays like that can take me to the, the past tense and I can't find what it is. But that being said, again, you know, uh, we republished Remains in um, about eight years ago. There have been about, I think, seven or eight um, pressings of it, but I, I, people kept uh, contacting me and saying, we want to do it, but you know, there's all this dated stuff in it, and it's all Edmonton, do you mind if we update it and set it here and there? And I'm, yeah, whatever, do whatever you want. And I thought, well, we're going to republish it, why don't I go and, and actually play with that stuff and, mm -hmm. and uh, see what happens. So I went in and I took out all the topical 80s references mm -hmm. and replaced them with something a little more classic or a little more expansive that, you know, reverberates. and. Um, it worked really well. I took the Edmonton stuff out of it. I mean, politically, you know, initially I wanted, when it was done in New York, when it was done in London, it was like, no, you can't set it someplace else. It has to be set in Edmonton. It has to be set in Canada. I'm not going to be ghettoized. I'm not going to be turned into an American or an English person. I don't need to do that anymore. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's 28 years later or whatever. So I, I did, I, I rewrote it and I, I changed it subtly so that it, it became more timeless, I guess would be the mm -hmm. way to put it. And also, you have your choice. You can call it love and human remains, or you can call it unidentified human remains and the true nature of love. Whatever works for you, I don't mm -hmm. care. 